Hi, my name is Oji Malonzo, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategic Accounts here at AllCloud. In this video, I'm going to cover the strategy for establishing a Salesforce governance model for your organization. A lot of companies I've worked with continue to make the most out of their Salesforce investment by focusing their efforts on developing a governance model at the time of their initial implementation, really to help achieve the following. High levels of user adoption, improved cost effectiveness, staying up to date with new to product functionality, minimizing the risk of change, and centralizing control and decision making. There are four key areas of focus that I'd like to cover to help establish a formal governance model. The first is defining a center of excellence or a COE. A COE starts with assembling a steering committee or an executive sponsor and key stakeholders can meet regularly to set the standards for growing the business using Salesforce and how it impacts their respective department. This also helps drive adoption from the top down, provides updates to the rest of the organization on enhancements and ensures a consistent user experience. The second is change management. In addition to training users how to use Salesforce, there's a strategy of ensuring high user adoption and ultimately acknowledging cultural and behavioral changes that will impact the organization. Generally speaking, what's the attitude of the users towards using a CRM? Are they getting any benefit to help enhance their daily activity? Are there dashboards available for management to keep track of who's using the application? And are there methods to identify how to help those who aren't as comfortable? The third is setting an organization strategy for governing changes within the system. This starts with having a formal process for using sandboxes and minimizing any risk to disrupting the users by testing in isolated environments before pushing any changes to production. More importantly, identifying how changes should get pushed from one test environment into another. This will ultimately lead to best practice of having a full sandbox, which we usually consider as a user acceptance testing or a UAT environment. The fourth is formalizing design standards. Defining naming conventions for customizations made within Salesforce. Documenting why things were built a certain way, really to help reduce the risk of having large data volumes, extensive security considerations, and any complicated integration requirements. Lab labeling everything in the back end of Salesforce for future reference, which becomes critical in the event of turnover takes place and your Salesforce program ownership changes within the organization. In the next video, I'll cover the best practices within each component of the governance model which will help you as you continue your journey on scaling your business on the Salesforce application. Thank you.